My last video discussed the Intellivision Amico, successor to the 1979 Intellivision console developed by Mattel Electronics. But did you know that Mattel had connections to comic strips in making another famous product? Stay tuned to find out on this video of Cotton Clad Comics. Mattel's Barbie enjoys worldwide recognition. From video games and books to pop music and blockbuster cinema, few toys have enjoyed such an impact on society as has the long-legged polymath who is Barbie. But would it surprise you to know that Barbie had her origins in comic strips? Harold Matt Matson, Elliot Handler, and Ruth Handler formed the toy company Mattel in 1945. While it enjoyed a fair amount of pre-Barbie success throughout the 1950s, it was in 1959 that they launched their defining product for the company, unless you prefer 1968's Hot Wheels to Barbie. Ruth Handler had been trying to get a doll into Mattel's lineup, but her efforts always failed. But while traveling in Germany in 1956, she discovered Lily, a doll sharing striking similarities to what would become Mattel's Barbie. Since 1952, the German tabloid newspaper Bild ran a somewhat adult-oriented comic strip named Lily, created by Reinhard Buthien. The Lily doll was created by Bild to showcase the comic's titular character. The doll seemed to be styled as an early collectible or gag item, as marketing targeted older youths and adults, and the price point seemed to be beyond what would be appropriate for a mere child's toy. Nevertheless, the doll became popular amongst children, and Handler, seeing this, decided to take the idea to the American market. Mattel acquired the rights to Lily in 1964, though the comic seems to have ceased publication in 1961. As has been said, the comic strip is aimed at adults, and while what humor they relate is tame by today's standards, it does deal in innuendo and other flirtations. The Amsterdam Toy Museum describes Lily's comic strip character as being, quote, post-war, sassy, ambitious, a gold digger, exhibitionist, and floozy, end quote. Quite the lineup and quite the description. However, most of the comics seem to be appropriate for all ages, and I've included a few, with the rough English translation, which I believe to be representative of the comic strip. Everything that follows would feel comfortable inside an Archie comic. My ski instructor really gave himself every conceivable effort, but we rarely got to ski. Either you praise me for who I am, or you don't. If you're in debt, you don't have to make such a depressed face. It's enough for your creditors to do it. Oh, can you help me up? Yes, do you think I'll invite you to sit down with me? Now that you've spent two hours telling me what you think of Freud's theory, may I now spend two minutes telling you what I think about you? And as a skirt hunter, you seem to be very successful. Of course, I've been out long enough, but my office supervisor is sitting on the bank, from whom I had a leave of absence today because of a bad cold. I'm sorry, Pashan. I'll never look at the shop windows again when I'm driving your car. While Mattel lifted Barbie out of Germany's Lily, was Lily herself inspired by a comic strip from the States? While reading Lily, I was struck by the similarities to Gladys Parker's comic strip, Mopsy. Mopsy ran from 1937 until 1966 and starred Mopsy, a trouble-finding, long-legged lady whom Parker based after herself. Lily and Mopsy share similarities in both appearance and attitude, being ambitious, fun-loving man-eaters whose style is aimed to allure. As an aside, the impetus for Mopsy itself was a remark made by the great Rube Goldberg when he told Parker that her hair looked like a mop. But the character herself was far from disheveled, sporting a pointed style which was not a mere accident. Parker was a lady of many talents, and one of those talents was fashion designing. 
Gladys Parker herself was an accomplished fashion designer, and her strips allowed her to showcase her own creations. Starting in 1945, Mopsy's Sunday strips even featured paper doll, called Mopsy Modes, of the title character, giving printed outfits for readers to swap out on their newsprint Mopsy. The character Lily also displayed a keen sense of fashion. The Lily doll with pioneer fashion is featured in the standard toy in a way which hadn't been done before, something which Barbie would later exploit without equal. While this is an interesting idea, there are no hard facts to link Gladys Parker and Reinhard Buthian, though surely the German cartoonist would have known of the popular American work which, by the time of the creation of Lily in 1952, had been running for 15 years and was seen in hundreds of newspapers. But perhaps both are merely born from a certain style of fashion drawing which existed at the time. We may never know if one influenced the other, but what we do know is that without the sharp-tongued Fraulein Lily gracing the pages of Build, Barbie would probably never have been. Auf Wiedersehen.